Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, January 29th, 2019. This is the Transportation Finance and Policy Committee. Uh, we have three bills on the uh, calendar this morning. I will indicate that there has been uh, some sort of a scheduling conflict for Senator Claussen. So if anyone is in the room for Senator Claussen's bill regarding semi-trailers and oversized vehicles in roundabouts, that matter will not be heard today. We're going to have to reschedule it for, uh, for Senator Claussen. He's uh, not available today. So we have two bills remaining on the calendar. The first one is uh, Senator Limmer's bill, Senate File 110. Welcome, Sen Senator Limmer. Please proceed with your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm glad to be here. Senate File 110 is a bill that creates an enhanced penalty for driving without a license. <clears throat> this bill passed in the Judiciary and Public Safety and Transportation Committees last year, uh, but ultimately did not cross the finish line due to the fact uh, that it was included in the supplemental omnibus bill that was vetoed last year. The bill that is before you, there's nothing new that you haven't seen or heard before. To give you a little further background, last biennium we held a joint hearing during the interim uh, with the Judiciary and Transportation Committees to better understand how a person can lose their driver license in the first place. Uh, we looked at the entire law and, uh, for example, if a person kills another with a motor vehicle, then criminal vehicular homicide would apply. Criminal vehicular operation resulting in great bodily harm applies if the person is driving in a grossly negligent manner or while under the influence of alcohol or controlled substances. Through this process, we identified a gap in the law for people who are habitually a menace on the roads they knowingly continue to drive without a valid driver license, despite the records of bad driving and disregard for public safety, and then face no greater penalty than just a misdemeanor for seriously injuring someone. I believe the enhanced penalty of a gross misdemeanor, as outlined in this bill, is appropriate in egregious situations where drivers habitually ignore public safety but I do not want to apply this gross misdemeanor standard to all people who are driving without a license. For example, there are those who lost driving privileges for failure to pay child care. Uh, there could be a kid who attempted to use a license to purchase tobacco or alcohol uh, while underage, or who is habitually truant, or a person who has lost driving privileges because fees were paid with a dishonored check. Well, while this behavior certainly warrants a sanction, it's not included in this type of behavior. Um, these, this is to in exclude that type of penalty, but focus on driving-related uh, penalties in the past. We've included in your packet this form that has a list of all of the driving uh, infractions that would be included for this type of additional sanction and not the administrative type that I so describe. I believe that public safety is a primary concern for the legislature and this bill attempts to craft a balance uh, between the two sides of, of the story of those who uh, are victims as well as those who are driving in a menacing manner uh, who have already lost their license but continue to drive and are a danger on the road. So in conclusion, uh, if you've lost a driver license for the driving-related offenses listed on this handout I described that tells you exactly what those citations mean and you are in an accident causes at least substantial bodily harm or this is your third violation in 10 years then you would be subject to the enhanced penalty of a gross misdemeanor as described in the bill. I'll stand for any questions. Thank you, Senator Limmer. Uh, Senator Limmer, do you have any uh, uh, folks that want to testify or have indicated to you? Uh, I, have, I have not been told of anyone that wishes to speak. That's fine. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to testify either for or against Senate File 91?
I'm sorry, Senate File 110. I'm on the wrong. I, I went to the wrong bill. Um, Senate File uh, 110. Seeing no, uh, none, we can go to member questions. Uh, first, Senator Howe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and Senator Limmer, uh, how does this affect those folks that uh, don't have legal status here and they get picked up numerous times for driving without a license because they can't get one right now? Uh, how was, you know, maybe they get three or four violations in a very short period of time because once they get picked up for driving without a license, the officers in that area pretty much know that they're driving without a license. How does that, how, how would this affect them? Senator uh, Limmer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Howe, uh, I don't know specifically if this bill addresses that situation of a person who has never had a driver's license and yet they're driving and being a menace on the road with a repeat violation. Um, that's one thing that we didn't even discuss in the Judiciary Committee. I, I can't answer that in, in uh, full disclosure. I don't know. Senator Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Senator Limmer, I think that's something that we should probably have a discussion on and maybe uh, work towards a resolution before we, we get there. Thank you. All right. Be happy to work with you, Senator Hall. Any other questions by any members? Senator Limmer, I've got, I've got a couple. Uh, you it, always do, it, Mr. Chair. And it might properly be uh, questions for your, uh, uh, your committee. But um, the, the one section uh, that uh, I'm drawn to is, is line 3.12, uh, which would make this applicable pursuant to a law from another state with similar uh, uh, violations as described in item I. First question, um, could you, would a person who violates uh, this statute in another state be subjected to punishment in two different states? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I can't speak for the first state that would be foreign to the state of Minnesota. Uh, I don't know what that state uh, how they would handle that particular law. Uh, I can only speak for what it would have its effect in Minnesota, and I believe it would have the same effect that is in, in the description that I've so outlined in the bill. So, Senator Limmer, if uh, an individual were to violate a law in a different state and is fined or wound up uh, in, in jail, could they then, as a state resident, be punished in Minnesota a second time, you think? Well, the way you described it, Mr. Chair, um, this would only apply to those who would lose their license, not if they are fined uh, in another state. Uh, you know, I, I'm, okay. you're bringing me into a murky area when it starts to apply to areas across state boundaries. Perhaps, yeah, and I, and perhaps I think I'll, council might be able to give us a little better idea. Well, I'll leave it lay there. It's just a question when I looked at the bill this morning uh, that it's just a question in my mind. Uh, I, I am a co-author on the bill and I do support the bill, but I'm not so sure I would be in favor of punishing people twice for the same uh, misconduct. Second question I have on the bill, and, and, and this one I'm sure that, or I'm pretty sure that you're going to want to maybe uh, discuss in your committee is the, the phrase that says uh, a law from another state similar to those described in item I. Uh, the word similar, Senator Limmer, strikes me, in, me as being uh, legally ambiguous uh, and would really be open to interpretation as to whether or not your bill would in fact be op uh, operative in Minnesota. So I'm not I'm not asking you to, to uh, necessarily comment on it. Uh, but it's, it's simply something that caught my eye and I'm, I'm not sure uh, what it means. Uh, so Mr. Chair, that's the uh, only the only other thought I have regarding the bill. The word similar uh, caught your eye. It didn't catch mine, Mr. Chair. And so uh, I'll focus on that 
as this bill progresses, unless you want to address it here. No, uh, I personally, I think that that would be a, an issue yeah. uh, for the Judiciary Committee and not the Transportation Committee. Uh, I simply wanted to uh, alert you to the fact that that is it's simply a question that I have, and uh, I won't be on in, in the discussion on the Judiciary okay. Committee. Well, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, I agree with you on the term that the word similar is an ambiguous term. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator Limmer. Thank you for the bill. I know how thoughtful you are and that you've given a great deal of thought to this, and I appreciate that. My question has to do with line 3.6 uh, on where it references 169A.52, and there's a list or a summary of, of kinds of um, issues that would apply for enhanced penalty. My question is about test refusal or failure of tests for DWI. Uh, my question mainly has to do with test refusal. I know there have been some constitutional issues in regards to that, uh, probable cause, uh, just a variety of different things. So I just had a question about including a test refusal as one of those. If you could maybe address that here. I know we're not judiciary, but it's still. Senator Limmer. Uh, Senator Kipmeyer, um, I believe we've had at least two hearings this year, uh, and we've had two hearings the year before, as well as an interim hearing. And I've never had anyone raise the issue that you are raising right now as uh, a refusal of testing, I would imagine a field test of some sort at the time of uh, a traffic infraction. Uh, and so we haven't had that discussion uh, in the last two years on that. Uh, the, the violations that you outlined are the one that's in your packet here. Mm -hmm. And I would have to do a little bit more study on the refusal test to determine whether or not it's appropriate for this uh, particular bill. I'm open to it. I just am, I don't have any knowledge on refusal of testing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, that's all I felt at this time to raise Senator it as an Kipmeyer. issue and have confidence that Senator Limmer will uh, consider that and review that. And I believe this bill is going to judiciary as well anyway. No, Mr. Chair, uh, it's already been to judiciary, okay. uh, but we could bring it back to judiciary if this committee so decides. Senator Kipmeyer. No, Mr. Chair, I wasn't exactly wanting it to do that. I just thought I was asking a question that would really have a straightforward answer. I wasn't trying to, uh, to do that, but I, I do think it is something that is important, but I would feel comfortable with having brought it up, Senator Limmer, that uh, certainly whatever next stop that it would have, that I think we should consider that and address that, and I will leave it to you. Uh, we're early in session, and I have confidence in your taking that um, up and dealing with it at the next stop, and it doesn't have to be judiciary. All right. Senator Limmer, but the note that I have is that the bill is to go from here to the floor. Uh, and uh, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it to you as to whether you want to send the bill back to judiciary or whether you want it to go to the floor from here. But I would like your assurances that you would take a look at the three issues that have uh, come up in the Transportation Committee. Uh, I really do believe that they are issues that are more properly de decided by the Judiciary Committee rather than the Transportation, Transportation Committee. So I'm going to accede to your wishes. Do you want the bill to go to the floor or back to your committee? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I would suggest we continue to put it on track for the floor. But <clears throat> I do recognize the three issues that you and your committee have brought up. The uh, one was uh, the application of another state penalty that may be in the past of that particular driver. Um, the word similar uh, to be um, uh, focused on and determine whether or not that's appropriate for this particular legislation. And the uh, field test that uh, Senator uh, Kiffmeyer raised at the same time. We will not uh, proceed to the floor until it's resolved. Thank you, Senator Limmer. Uh, uh, with that, uh, similar, Senator Limmer's motion would be uh, 
that the bill be recommended to pass and proceed to the floor. Senator Howe? Do you have a question or did you want to make the motion? No, Mr. No, Mr. Chair. I actually just, Senator Limmer wanted to make that, that comment on the unlicensed, mm -hmm. not yeah. legal status folks should be another issue that we should take up. And Mr. Chair, we'll Senator add Limmer. that as a fourth factor. Yeah. Senator Howe, would you like to make the motion? Sure, I'm just not quite sure. Is it going, uh, where is, the, the it? is it going to the floor? The motion, Senator, uh, uh, I will, uh, would be that the uh, Senate file 110. I'm sorry. I'll make, it, I'll just uh, so move to make Senate file 110 to the floor. Uh, be recommended to pass and, and uh, Absolutely. to the floor. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor uh, of Senator Howe's motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion passes and uh, you are on the way, your way to the floor. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Senator Lincoln.